In this video, I'll be installing Web Gateway on localhost. Uh, this is a Windows 7 64-bit computer, and I do not even have IIS installed at all on this computer, so I'm going to go uh, from the very beginning. So you can see I don't have anything for localhost. Okay, so the first thing I want, I'm going to do is go Add Windows Features. So I'll go to Control Panel, and then I'll click Programs. And I want to turn Windows Features on or off and it'll populate my list. Okay, so there's a few things I want to pick here. One is Internet Information Services, so I'll click that, and then I need to expand that, and I want to expand World Wide Web Services, then Application Development Features. Okay, in this list, I want to click ASP.NET, and that will select some, uh, select some other options, so I want to go ahead and leave those selected. Okay, then I'll scroll down a bit, and under Security, I want to add basic authentication. Okay, so those are the items I need to add. I'll click OK. And then it'll add those features to Windows. Okay, so once that's complete, I should be able to access localhost. And indeed I can, so I'm all set there. Okay, the next step is for me to register ASP.NET extensions um, with IIS. Okay, now I need to have the .NET 4 framework installed in the computer, um, and you can check very easily to see if you have that. Go to C, uh, Windows then Microsoft.net. Okay, and this is 64 bits, so I'll do the 64 framework. Now right here I have version 4 of .NET. Now if you don't have that, you can go out to Microsoft and download the .NET 4 framework. Okay, but I'll go here, and there's an exe I want to run in here. It's called ASP.NET underscore reg IIS. Okay, and that is right here. So there's a very simple way to do that. I'm just going to uh, copy the path here, then I'll run a command prompt. Okay, and I want to right click and run that as an administrator. Okay, and I'll change directories to that path I just copied. Okay, and then I want to run ASP.NET underscore REGIIS, oops, REGIIS dash I to install. Okay. Okay, so that's done. I can now exit. Okay, the next step is to configure IIS itself. So I'll go find IIS here, Internet Information Services Manager. Okay, and then I'll expand over here to my connections. Now the first thing I'm going to do is add an application pool. So I'll click on that and then do Add Application Pool. Okay, I want to call this Web Gateway. I can call it whatever I want, but I'll call it Web Gateway. And I want to make sure I select the .NET 4 framework here. Okay, the rest is fine as is. I'll click OK. Okay, now there's one other thing I want to uh, set for Web Gateway Application Pool, and that's right here in my uh, Advanced Settings. I want to enable 32-bit applications. So I'll click that drop-down and set that to True, and do OK. Okay, I'm done there. Now what I want to do is expand my sites, and then I'll right-click on default website, and I'm going to add an application. Okay, so I'll click that, and I'll call it Web Gateway. 
Okay, and then I want to pick my Web Gateway application pool that I just created. So I'll click OK. Now, the physical path is the path to Web Gateway. And actually, I haven't installed Web Gateway, so I guess that would be a good thing. So what I'm going to do is install the Web Gateway program right here. Probably should have done that first, but that's fine. Okay, I'll click Next, Next again, read the license agreement, accept that, click Next. Now I would recommend just leaving the default installation path, which is C Web Gateway. Now I'll click Next and Install. Okay, so I'm done with that now. And now I'm back in IIS, which I could, like I said, could have installed Web Gateway first, but it doesn't matter because uh, I just want my physical path now to be set to where Web Gateway is installed. Okay, and that by default is C Web Gateway, so I'll click that. Do OK. Now I want to click Connect As here, and I want to connect uh, using local administrator credentials. That's the preferred method. So I'll click Specific User. And then I'm going to use an admin here, local admin account. Click OK, and then OK again. Now I want to test my settings to make sure it's happy connecting that way, and it is, so I'm good there. OK, now I'll click OK. Now the next thing I want to do is check my authentication here. And I have two that should be enabled by default, but I have anonymous and forms, okay? So those are the two that I want, and they are both enabled by default, okay? So I'm good there. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is tell Web Gateway where its database is, okay? Now, when I install Web Gateway, it puts a management console on my desktop, but also in my start menu here, I can go find Web Gateway, and here's my Web Gateway settings file, or executable file, so I'll run that. And I can do various things in here. I can change the theme of Web Gateway from AccuTrack to AccuSQL. I can change the default logo if I'd like to. So I can go browse and find a logo, which would typically be your college logo. So I'll just pick one here. OK, and I can configure my mail server. That's for sending appointment confirmations to the students and tutors. Uh, if I'd like. I can add news articles here, um, and news articles appear on the home page, the main page of Web Gateway. Uh, but the one thing I have to do is to set my data location. So I'll click Configure here for Set Data Location. Okay, and that brings up my database connections uh, interface here. Now I want to define a new connection. Okay, and you'll see if I click Yes, I would be connecting to a SQL Server database. If I click Native here, that would be an AccuTrack database. Okay, now one stipulation for AccuTrack, the AccuTrack database needs to reside on the same computer that's running Web Gateway. Um, for SQL Server version, that's not necessary. Okay, but I'll define a SQL Server in this case. And then I can call this what I'd like. Now, there's a drop-down box in Web Gateway we'll, that we'll see in a minute that says Choose Center. So uh, if I only have one database, that uh, would not apply. But if I uh, add multiple databases, it can say Choose Your Center, which is actually choosing different databases. Okay, so in this example, I'm going to have a tutoring database and an advising database. Now, you may only need one database, so it's totally up to how you want to configure it. But I'll connect to my SQL Server here. Now, we have a specific port that we use. If you're using the default 1433 port, you wouldn't need to even put the port there. And I want to use uh, SA credentials here to connect. OK, and then I click my dropdown, and that should show me a list of my databases. And I'll pick a testing database. Test my connection. That's good. And then save. Now I'm going to save again back on the main form here. 
Okay, and then I'm going to define another database, another SQL Server database. Call it advising. And I'll pick, uh, let's see, advising database. Test my connection. And then save. And save again on the main form here. Okay, so now I have two databases to find in this case. Okay, and then I want to save my changes back in my console. Okay, and then exit. So now back on my local host now, I should have Web Gateway to find. So localhost web gateway. I access that. And it's loading Silverlight. And now I'm logged in. You can see I've got the uh, logo that I've updated. Uh, here's the choose a center I was talking about. So by default it's tutoring, but I also have my advising. So if you had a tutoring and advising center, you could have separate databases and then the student could make an appointment in either of those locations. Okay, uh, here's my news that appears on the main screen. Um, also, I didn't mention it, but there's a, you can change what the main uh, uh, information here is right below the logo, so I could uh, customize that if I'd like to. But now I'm pretty much ready to log in and schedule an appointment via the web interface. And make an appointment. Uh, pick a particular course, and remember all of this stuff is uh, defined in AccuTrack or AccuSQL. Uh, I mean the activities, the tutors, uh, the tutor hours, so everything you set up for appointments for AccuSQL or AccuTrack is used in Web Gateway. Okay, so I'll pick a particular tutor, pick a time. Uh, I can schedule it based on my scheduling parameters here, and again back in AccuTrack or AccuSQL. Uh, appointment recorded. Okay, so my web gateway, gateway is running. I'm in good shape here. Uh, the other thing I can do is register for seminars. So I can see what's registered or I can register for a seminar. And that's also defined in the AccuTrack or AccuSQL database. Okay, so now my web gateway is up and running. Um, the next thing I would want to do, I probably wouldn't want it on localhost. I would want to put it out on the World Wide Web, so I'd publish it, you know, out wherever your college site is. Uh, we also have a single sign-on that you can declare, so that would mean you sign into a portal, and then we can pass the portal uh, information from the student directly to Web Gateway, so they don't have to sign in twice in order to make an appointment. Okay, so some, those are some of the things you can add after. Now, the one thing I want to show you here is I'm going to go ahead and break a few things just to show you what would happen. So let's go back to IIS. And these are some common type of, oops, type of troubleshooting steps that you would take. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is disable 32-bit application. So if you don't set that, if that's set to false and I try to launch Web Gateway, you'll get an error something like this. Okay, so that's one thing to check is to make sure that the 32-bit is enabled. Okay, uh, another thing to check is to make sure that you're using proper authentication here. Uh, make sure that you have uh, anonymous in forms. If I disabled anonymous, I would get an error back in Web Gateway. Uh, the other thing that we want to check here is to make sure that our Connect as credentials are set properly. So use a system admin account, local system admin account, and then make sure when you test that uh, everything works for authentication and authorization. Uh, another thing that's important to check is to make sure that it's connecting properly to the database. So you'll have a problem if the database, uh, if you're having trouble connecting to the SQL Server or AccuTrack database. 
So verify that indeed your database connections are correct. Now if I remove both of these, then I'll show you what it'll look like if I try to run it. Okay, so you'll get referenced uh, to an object not declared, and it's telling me in here that it can't find its database. Okay, so that's another item to check. Uh, other than that, really, you should pretty much be set. And, of course, you can call us here or email us at support at accutrack, A-C-C-U-T-R-A-C-K dot O-R-G if you have any trouble with your web gateway installation. Okay, thank you.